In the next few questions, we're going to simplify by implementing some factoring techniques. In number 40, I recognize that we have a trinomial here. And I think if some of you thought about this in the following way, let's say you, let, let's say you thought about this as 1 minus 2a plus a squared. You would say, okay, I, I could factor this. This isn't so bad. The factors of 1 are 1 and 1. The factors of a are a and a. And I think they're both going to be minus. And we could check by foiling. First would be 1 minus a minus a is minus 2a plus a squared. Yeah, that's right. And we could simplify this in a way just writing it like this if you wanted to. So keeping that in mind, we're going to factor this trig expression in a very similar way. So I'm going to set up two binomials. The factors options for one are just one and one. That's it. Pretty easy. The factor options for sine squared are sine and sine. And they're both going to be minus. Now you can convince yourself that you're correct by foiling that out. And it does equal the original problem. And you could just write this a bit more concisely by saying 1 minus sine x squared. In number 42, it's a little bit more complicated because we're not dealing in the same trig family. We've got a, combinations, a combination of sine and cosines. So what I'm going to focus my attention on is cosine squared because that I can replace using one of the Pythagorean identities. So what I'm going to do is say sine x minus blank minus 1. Now, the blank used to contain cosine squared, but in its place, I'm going to put 1 minus sine squared. That's an equivalent manipulation of a Pythagorean identity. I'm going to distribute the negative through the parentheses. So we have sine x minus 1 plus sine squared x minus 1. I'll write this in descending exponential order. Sine squared x plus sine x minus 2. And now it's looking a lot like number 40. It's going to be trinomial factoring. The factor, uh, the factor pairs for sine squared are just sine and sine, or more specifically sine x and sine x. The factor combinations for 2 are 2 and 1. 1 gets a plus, and 1 gets a minus. And that's going to give us the uh, desired outcome. And if you could foil this to check, and sure enough, if you do that, you, you do get the original problem. So in number 44, we have a trinomial. It's a little bit disguised, particularly because of the middle term here. But I'm going to, I'm going to fix that by using the uh, re reciprocal relationship and say that this is sine squared x plus 2 sine x plus 1. So this is a trinomial. The trig families are the same. It's entirely in terms of sine. So I'm going to factor. And the factor possibilities for sine squared are sine x and sine x. The factor possibilities for 1 are just 1 and 1. And I think if I make both these signs positive, when I FOIL, I'll get exactly what I started with. So I'll write this a bit more concisely by saying sine squared x plus, actually I take that back. So 
So I'm going to write this more concisely by saying sine x plus 1 quantity squared. In number 46, we have the issue of not having this, you know, we're not entirely in the same trig family. So I think I'm going to focus on this tangent squared and see what I can do with that. So I'm going to say secant squared x minus secant x plus blank. Now I know that 1 plus tan squared is secant squared, which means that tan squared alone is going to be secant squared minus 1. Now if I distribute through the parentheses, I end up getting secant squared x minus secant x plus secant squared x minus 1. And then I can write that in descending exponential order. 2 secant squared x minus secant x minus 1. And then I can factor this. The factor possibilities for 2 secant squared are going to be 2 secant x and secant x. The factor of possibilities for 1 are 1 and 1. And now you have to think for just a minute about how you're going to allocate the signs. I'm going to put a minus here and a plus here. And I'm going to foil in my head to check. Yep, that's right. For our last two problems, we're going to simplify using a different factoring technique. This time we're going to use the difference of two squares. As I look at number 48 and I focus on the numerator, I see that I have a dot situation, a difference of two squares. So I'm going to factor that accordingly, which will be tan alpha plus 1 times tan alpha minus 1. And this is all over 1 plus tan alpha. I notice that I have factors that are common to the top and the bottom. And we're left with just tan alpha minus 1. Easy. In number 50, we've got the problem of having two different trig families. So before we do any factoring, I'm going to focus on the numerator. And I'm going to ask myself, well, what could I replace tan squared with? And if I think of the Pythagorean identity, 1 plus tan squared is secant squared, I can replace that with secant squared x minus 1. And this is all over secant of x plus 1. Now, if I focus on the numerator, I could factor that as a difference of two squares. So I'm going to put secant x plus 1 and secant x minus 1. And that's a great one right there. And this is all going to be over secant x plus 1. So the secant x plus 1's cancel out. And we're left with just secant x minus 1.